218, 225 and 245. Those amendments are to be moved and considered on block and they are to be moved by Doug Cameron and seconded by Nadine Flood. I call Delegate Cameron to the microphone. Uh, thank you, uh, Comrade Chair. Um, I move uh, a series of uh, amendments in relation to the surplus, the financial transaction tax and the minerals resource rent tax. Could I say that I move these uh, with full com my full confidence in our economic team. I think our economic team of uh, Wayne Swan, P Penny Wong and Bill Shorten leave the other side of hockey, Rob and Corman for dead. There is absolutely no way you can compare them with our economic team. I have to say to you, I've always uh, been an admirer of Wayne as the Treasurer. Uh, I don't, don't uh, agree with Wayne on every issue, but I have to say to you, uh, when you look at what Wayne Swan has done compared to that lazy, gutless uh, treasurer that we had for 11 and a half years, Peter Costello, uh, Wayne Swan is the best treasurer we've ever had. I think, I think there's been a myth, a big myth, built up about Peter Costello and the press should actually do some critical analysis of the state he left this country in. And he was incompetent, he was lazy, and he couldn't stand up to the pri his Prime Minister on any issue. We've got, a, we've got a Treasurer that is doing the business for this country, and thanks, Wayne. But I don't agree with you on some issues. I don't agree with you on some issues, comrade. I don't think we should ever have a surplus fetish, and I'm not saying Wayne has, but we should never have a fetish for a surplus. You know, We should say that if jobs are in trouble, if our communities are in trouble, and our, our people are in trouble, we look after them. And if that means we go into a budget deficit to save jobs, that's what we should do, exactly the same as we did in 2011 <laughs> under Wayne's leadership. I'm simply asking that we address critically the financial transaction tax that is being spoke about around the rest of the world. Look at the amount of money that's sloshing around, speculative finance, destroying budgets, destroying governments. We should be engaging constructively in that debate with people like President Sarkozy of France. And I'm simply saying with a turnover, an average daily turnover of $40 trillion, it's something that we as a Labour Party should be addressing, and I'm asking for a constructive engagement, engagement on the financial transaction tax. In relation to the mining resource rent tax, congratulations, Wayne, uh, and to the Prime Minister for getting that up against some of the most vested interests in this country. If you look at what's being done, can you imagine, you remember, you know what we had? We had the rally, the Rolls-Royce rally over in Perth, you know, where all the billionaires were out there, you know, the Armani anarchists out there, you know, saying, don't tax us, we're too poor. And yet you went round behind, behind the rally and the Rolls-Royce, the BMWs and the Mercs were lined up to take them back to their mansions. You know, these are the people that are saying they shouldn't pay any more tax. You know, Gina Reinhart, $10.3 billion personal wealth. Clive Palmer, $5.1 billion. And Twiggy, no tax. You know, Twiggy, no tax. He's worth $6.2 billion. You know, these people are worth more than some of our industries. You know, and they're saying they don't want to pay tax. Well, I take the view, and what I'm arguing for here this morning, is that the MRRT is the right thing to do. We've got the MRRT in, and we're arguing that we should have a look at that in 12 months' time, make sure we're getting what we, what we need to get from these billionaires and the big mining companies, and look at whether we need to make that tax wider. In, the, in, in industry, whether we are getting our fair share of our resources, because these resources 
don't belong to Twiggy No Tax Forest. They don't belong to Gina Reinhardt. They don't belong to Clive Palmer, BHP, Rio Tinto, or any of those people. They are our resources, and we should be getting a fair share from those resources. And comrades, if we are want to do one thing, the Labour Party always wants to build a good society. That's what we are about. Sure, building a strong economy is important, but the market should serve society, not the other way around. And that's what we should be about as a Labour Party. And I think that's where we are heading, and I'm happy to be part of a party that is uh, taking the decisions that we are taking. You know, the global financial crisis, 210,000 jobs we created. We created 210,000, we underpinned 210,000 jobs. And what were the coalition saying at that time? The coalition was saying, well, let's wait and see what happens. Let's wait and see what happens. Well, if we'd have done that, we'd have ended up in a deep recession in this country with hundreds of thousands of jobs lost. I have to say to you, when I sit in the Senate, when I sit in the Senate and watch the economic incompetence across the other side of the chamber, arguing that the market should be let rip, that the government should be hands off, that we should get bigger and bigger budget surpluses, I just wonder why the murder press in this country get away with what they are doing. Because they have got a responsibility to actually take on some of the absolute nonsense that's coming out of the coalition, including Tony Abbott, who hasn't got an economic brain between those two wing nut ears. <laughs> so let me tell you, my position is I broadly support the, uh, the, the leadership from the Prime Minister and the Treasurer and Penny Wong and Bill Shorten. I never thought I'd say that. Uh, <laughs> good on you, Bill. Uh, but I, I support that leadership, and I support where we're heading. But we are simply saying there are these other issues on the horizon that need to be looked at, important issues. We should take constructive views on that. This is a Labour Party about protecting jobs and building jobs and building the good society. That's what we're about, and that's what we should stand for. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate Cameron. Uh, that's, these resolutions and amendments are seconded by Nadine Flood, and I call Delegate Flood to the microphone. You've got to love following on from Doug.